I'm going to read from Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. This is a very familiar verse. This is the disciples' prayer or the prayer that Jesus taught the disciples. And um, so I'm going to read the first verse. Matthew 6 and 9. In this manner, therefore pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. So my title today is, Let's Celebrate the True Halloween. Some of your um, eyebrows are going up and looking at me strangely, but don't judge me yet. Listen to this sermon fully and then you can judge me. All right? So, I say celebrate the true Halloween. Sometimes we don't understand the meaning of this word as we ought to understand. So, hallow comes from the Greek word hagiaso. That means to render holy and acknowledge worthy of the highest honor and devotion. Worthy of worship. Most honorable of all beings. So we need to recognize our father as the most honorable person that demands our worship and true devotion. So this is what it means. Tomorrow, many people are going to celebrate Halloween, not only in this country, but in many countries. Uh, the news said yesterday that about 150 people were uh, stampeded and died and 150 or so were hurt, injured, uh, celebrating Halloween in South Korea. So, it, it is celebrated in many nations, but do we understand what this truly means? So, in order to understand who God is, we need to understand his names. There are so many names given to God, but I'm going to just consider about six or seven of those today. It says, in this manner, therefore, pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. The name of God is so important. It's so significant. We need to understand what those names mean. One of those names is El Shaddai, the Almighty God. God appeared to Abraham and said, I am the El Shaddai. I can do anything. I am the all-powerful God. Our God is an almighty God. How many of you believe that this morning? Amen. Praise the Lord. There is none like him. He created this universe. He is a God of creation. That's why he told Abraham, if I created all of this universe, will I not be able to create uh, another human being, another child for you? I am able. How many of you believe he is able? Amen. Give the Lord a hand this morning because our God is an almighty God. There is nothing impossible with God. I don't know what you're going through this morning. There may be a need in your life. You're almost giving up. You think it is humanly speaking impossible. But I want you to know our God is El Shaddai. Yes. Therefore his name needs to be hallowed. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He is the almighty God, the El Shaddai. Then we see another name, Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. God is our provider. He provides on time. I always say, he is never too late. He's never too early. But he is always on time. You may think it's getting late. It's impossible. But God says he's a God who can provide. He's the one that provided the lamb for the sacrifice on the mountain where Abraham was trying to sacrifice his son. He thought 
my child is down it's going to be dead in a few moments but no god appeared just on time i want you to know that he is a god who acts just on time don't give up don't throw in the towels don't say it is impossible all things are possible to them that believe believe in god he moves on a timely manner and thirdly jehovah rafa he is our healer maybe somebody needs healing in your body here this morning How many of you believe he can heal you right now? As you listen to the word of God, he says, the word of God says in Psalm 107 and verse 20, he sent the word and healed them. Amen. There is power in the word of God. As you listen to the word of God, healing can take place. I have told you this several times. In 1972, I was suffering from asthma. and there was no medication for asthma at that time my doctor said he can take this injection for life maybe it'll give you some relief but there is no guarantee i was not able to be out when it was raining or when there is dust i could not play tennis which i loved very much i was really struggling and um, it was about 3 years that I have been living in the United States and uh, it was getting a little bit hopeless. And so one day I went to Pastor John Osteen's house in those days the church was small. And we were talking on the driveway and he said, Pastor Osteen, I have asthma, I don't know what to do. He said, God has given me special gift in praying for asthma patients. He laid his hand on my chest and prayed for 30 seconds and to this day after 50 years I'm still healed. Amen. He is a healer, he is Jehovah Rapha. What the medicine cannot do, God can do. What the doctors cannot do, he can do it for you today. We see miracles all over the place. We see many people here getting healed through prayer. Even at the end of the service, we are going to pray for you if there is a need. And I believe he is still in the business of healing people. And then we see Jehovah Nissi, our banner. He gives us victory. How often we feel we are down and defeated. we are down in the dump the devil has an upper hand on us we are defeated we are failing in our business but the word of god says he is our banner he will give us victory amen, amen. he will give you victory right now in the name of jesus the devil is defeated he is under our feet and we have victory in jesus christ no wonder The word of God says hallowed be thy name. His name is worthy of worship. His name is worthy of being hallowed. Then it says Jehovah Shalom. Jehovah is our peace. How often we lose peace? we struggle over matters we we uh, you know lose our peace and we become uh, you know so discouraged despondent and we are without peace but jesus is our peace god is our peace amen you can have the peace that passeth all understanding jesus said i give you the peace not like the world gives you the peace but the peace that passeth all understanding beyond everybody's imagination hallelujah how many of you have been oh, 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 you have been discouraged sometime in your life yes. you have been yes. oh i have been there but god is my peace yes. 
you can have peace in the midst of troubles that's why jesus said when he was crossing uh, the sea when the disciples were all worried because oh the the water was beating on them the wind and the storm were against them and jesus said peace be still amen and the wind and the storm obeyed there was peace that's his name do you think his name is worthy of honor and worthy of worship and worthy of hallow his name alone yes. is worthy to be praised yes. i have a reason why i'm say i'm bringing these uh, to you because later on we are going to look at other um, uh, things that are going on around us so i want you to know his name is worthy to be worshiped his name is worthy to be hallowed hallowed be thy name amen amen praise the lord jehovah rohi is our shepherd oh he's always with us his word says i will never leave you nor forsake you but i will be with you till the end of the ages people may forsake you husband may forsake you wife may forsake you your children may forsake you but god says i will never forsake you even though you go through the valley of the shadow of death oh he said his presence will be there he will be with you loneliness when you are all alone our shepherd is with us he will guide us he will feed us he will provide for us and so jehovah rohi seven jehovah shama god who is there god who is present with us how many of you can feel the presence of god here this morning hallelujah praise the lord oh when you are going through such struggles in your life loved ones uh, uh, have uh, uh, departed us uh, and uh, they, you don't see them anymore for a while uh, until you get to heaven uh, oh god says he is with us when the three hebrew children were thrown into the heated furnace seven times everybody thought they were going to be burned to death but oh there was the fourth man yes. there is the fourth man oh god he is present with us he will be with us no matter what we are going through the furnace the fire in life jehovah shama god is there no wonder jesus taught the disciples to hallow his name wonderful name we have everything in in god we will not lack anything look at what jesus claims in the new testament jesus said i am the bread of life you know bread gives us life and it sustains us it gives us the strength and jesus said i am the bread of life if you know me if you partake of me we usually take the communion every sunday but today we don't but he is the bread of life unless and until you partake of his body and the blood you have no life in you i am the light of the world he said i am the light therefore you are the light of the world last night we celebrated that and um you know we have the little lights that need, that that will lead other people to christ and so we are the light of the world jesus is the light of the world he came to this world when there was darkness all around everything was in darkness people who walked in darkness saw the light jesus is the light of the world amen he gives us light when he is with us we are no longer in darkness he said i am the door i am the door to the father many religions 
believe that there are many ways to God but I believe there is only one way and that is through Jesus Christ to God the Father there is no other way as long as you believe that you will have persecutions if you are willing to accommodate other views then you, you won't have any problems the problem that Christian church facing today is because they believe there is only one way these days it is being compromised in India if you say you know you know, we, we, we accept your gods as well then there is no persecution only when you say Jesus is the only way then you have problem then you're head gets cut off your buildings are torn down your churches are you know uh, 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 destroyed all of the persecution is because you believe there is only one way yes. how many of you believe there is no other way Amen. other than the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. this is going to matter much in these last days do you hold on to that? Is the word of God right? Jesus is the only way. Yes. He is the door. I am the good shepherd. We already looked at that. I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Even though you die, if you believe in him, you shall still live. There is life after death. How many of you believe that? Amen. Amen. We are going to be still more alive after death. Because there is life after death if you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I am the life and the resurrection. Hallelujah. And if you believe in him, you will continue to live in his presence in all eternity. He will give you everlasting life. And so, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the only way. He is the truth. Nowadays we have problems because people are mixed up with all kinds of ideologies, philosophies, and um, uh, you know, but the word of God says, I am the way, the truth. The word of God is the truth. This is all truth. This will show you the way. This is not human ideas. This is the very word of God. Amen. I believe there is no mistake in the word of God. Amen. This is true. And so therefore, we need to believe and establish our lives on the word of God because this alone is the truth and then I am the true wine when you are attached to the true wine then you have life then you will bear fruits when you are attached to Jesus Christ when you walk with him when you live in him you will bear fruit you will have life and so that's why Jesus taught them to hallow the name of God. Hallelujah. I hope I have established the fact that he alone is worthy of our worship. Amen. He alone is worthy to be hallowed. Isaiah 45 and 21 says, tell and bring forth your case. Yes, let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from ancient times? Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord and I there is no other God. Besides me, a just God and a savior, there is none besides me. Are there other gods? According to the word of God? You're silent. I just told you. 
Who has told it from that time? Have not I the Lord? And there is no other God besides me. A just God and a Savior. There is none besides me. Do you believe that verse? Yes. We need to. There is none other than the true God. That's why I titled it, Let's Celebrate the True Halloween. And um, hollow his name. And secondly, hollow his presence. His presence is so wonderful. Psalm 16 and 11 says, you will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. So the presence of God need to be hallowed. We need to honor the presence of God in our homes. We need to honor the presence of God in the, the, uh, in the church. We need to honor the presence of God wherever we go. Because... His name is holy. Yes. His presence makes all the difference. Wherever Jesus went, miracles took place. People were healed. His presence made all the difference in the world. His presence is important. Do we hollow his presence? Do we honor his presence? That's why we need to Sanctify our homes and our lives. Because the presence of God is in our heart. We cannot be here on Sundays and honor his name. And through the rest of the week dishonor his name. No. We need to honor his presence in our lives. Wherever we go. Hollow. His presence. And I already said about the three Hebrew children. Oh, the presence of God with them. Because of that, no king could destroy them. No fire could destroy them. His presence. We need to honor his presence. We need to understand his presence. The almighty God. The wonderful God. And then thirdly, hallowed no other. That is, I don't know how you're going to take that. In my opinion, in my belief, no other gods should be honored. Exodus 20 and 3 says, you shall have no other gods before me. 24, you shall not make for yourself a carved image, any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water. In other words, God is very serious about going after other gods. Which are, not, which are not real. He said, have you not seen my power? Have you not known my might? Have you not seen what I have done for you? I am the almighty God. There is none other. Amen. Therefore, worshipping or honoring false gods is forbidden in the word of God. Worship, honor, no other. Deuteronomy 18 and 9. When you come into the land which the Lord your God is giving you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. We are prone to follow the customs and the festivities of everybody else. But the word of God is very strong on this. 
says, do not follow the abominations of those nations. Deuteronomy 18 and 10, there shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or his daughter pass through the fire. Or one who practices witchcraft. Or a soothsayer. Or one who interprets omens. Or a sorcerer. When I came here a little over 50 years ago, sorcery and witchcraft was almost unheard of. At least not in the open. They did not discuss that. But today, it's a commonplace. Sorcery, witchcraft, and abominable practices. I mean, they were prevalent in other countries like India or Africa or other nations, but not in the United States. At least not in the open. But today, it is a commonplace. But the word of God says, There shall not be found among you anyone who makes his son or daughter pass through the fire. Nowadays you hear, children are stolen, you know, kidnapped and sacrificed, killed. So many children are being sacrificed nowadays. And especially during this time of Halloween. And that's why we need to be careful. We're going to look at four festivities that uh, our community is familiar with in this nation at this time. Four festivities. And we need to know them. One is somehow uh, I hope I have pronounced it right. Or what is known as Halloween. It is a feast of the dead. We know more about this than any other. So I will not dwell on it very long. Feast of the dead. Tomorrow, people in several countries are going to celebrate. Uh, it is spreading into Western countries as well. And... Um, they're going to have the feast of the dead. Celebrate the dead. It is a festival during which practice various forms of divination. Concerning future events. So there is a lot of witchcraft involved. Sorcery involved. And uh, evil spirits involved. It is the night of the evil spirits. Satan's high holy day. Some people even go to the cemetery. As, so that they can gain more power in their lives. It's Satan's high holy day. And therefore, a lot of, um, you know, uh, uh, forms of uh, sacrifices and, uh, and um, uh, the... Uh, the Calling of the evil spirits take place during tomorrow, during the Halloween. Sacrifices offered to the devil, including human sacrifices to gain power. Worship of false gods and contact with the dead, which the Bible prohibits for a Christian to participate in. Am I clear on this? You may not agree with me, but that's the word of God. And show that next uh, slide. You can see all kinds of signs associated with that. Evil spirits. Witches. Wiccas. And you mean it. So is Halloween... Appropriate for us to participate in. And many people die uh, because they, there is poison in the candies or uh, in the drinks. And uh, so it, it is really destructive for human beings. 
do we participate in it? That's a decision you have to make. You don't have to follow my instructions, but I'm going to tell you the truth. My job is to tell you the truth, instruct you, but it is not my job to control you. I'm not here to control you. You make your own decisions. You decide what is right in the light of the word of God. And the second one is on them. I don't think anybody has ever spoken on this. Onam is a Keralite. The Kerala is the southernmost um, state of India where predominantly it is Christian. Apostle Thomas came there in AD 52 and established the Christian church and th that's why I have the name Thomas. And he converted uh, four families initially and then um, we have probably what? 40% of Christians in that state, plus or minus. Uh, it is one of the, uh, we have another state also, which is probably predominantly Christian. And um, Onam is a festival of the Keralites only, mainly. And what they believe is, they believe in the mythical demon king, called Mahabali. It's mythical. I took that right out of the website. I did not call it mythical. I did not call it demon. I just took it right out of the website. It's a homecoming of King Mahabali. Mahabali was sent to the underworld by the god Vishnu. There is another picture um, after that. Vishnu is the upholder of creation. He sustains this universe, or so do they believe. And one day he appeared as a young boy, and he, and Mahabali was so pleased with him, he said, what can I do for you? He said, just one request. I'm going to measure Three feet, three, you know, I'm going to three feet with my foot, and that's all I need. And uh, he did not realize who he was, and he was so, such a generous king. And if you want more details, you can ask um, Dr. Um, Chetain. He is, he is the authority on Hinduism, okay? <laughs> Catch him after this. And um, so he measured one foot and the whole earth was covered. And then he measured the sky with one foot and there's one more request left. He said, I don't have anything more. So he put his foot on his head, pushed him down to the underworld or Padala. And so he's living there, so to speak, and he's allowed to come only once a year. Stay there 10 days, and the whole Keralites, or at least many of them, celebrate with the sumptuous meals. And it has come to the United States as well. But do we know that he is a demon king, and he is a mythological figure? The Bible has already warned us we don't have anything to do with them. There's only one God. So, understand. This is a celebration based on the mythology, myth, mythology. And it is not even real, but it is celebrated because it brings so much of joy to the people of Kerala. All right? That is Onam, Halloween. Onam, these are all celebrated, being um, celebrated in many nations right now. That's why I'm telling you. We celebrate without knowing what it is, but we have a right to know. Number three is holy, H-O-L-I. It's called the Festival of Colors. It is celebrated all over India, probably except Kerala state. I have lived in other states. And I have been warned not to 
go outside on that day because they will hit you with colors, spray it on you, mess up your clothes and all of that. When I was going to Bible college there. And so I know it is celebrated. It's a spring festival of the Hindus. One of the reasons they say why they celebrate is because Krishna fell in love with Radha, a milkmaid. And she was so fair and Krishna was bluish. So he was not too sure whether he would like him and so he painted her face. That's one of the stories. For each one of these there are many stories. I don't know all of them. But see... Brother Dr. Shetty, he will tell you all the stories, okay? <laughs> he colored her face with blue to match him. That is one of the stories. See the other picture? It's a spring festival celebrating the many colors because the flowers uh, come up. It's a blooming time, so it's a joyful time, so they celebrate that. There's also a story connected with triumph over good over evil. And um, the meaning they say it is spread the colors of compassion, happiness, kindness, wherever you go. Burn the negative things, so on and so forth. Okay, so holy. Holy is also celebrated. Uh, wherever the Indians are. And then finally, Diwali, Festival of Lights. Right now it is being celebrated. Diwali has become a public holiday here in our county. Did you know that? Diwali is celebrated, but Diwali is the return of Rama and his wife Sita after an exile of 14 years. These are all mythologies. Villagers light lights for the defeat of the demon king Ravana. Okay? And right now, two gods, uh, one god and goddesses are being included in it. One is Lakshmi, the goddess of prosperity, and the other one is Ganesh. See the Ganesh as the elephant trunk. And the story is that Shiva was once out, out of the home and when he returned, the house was locked and there was a little boy and he would not open the door uh, for reasons I don't want to disclose. But, um, uh, so, Vishnu got mad and cut his head off. And then he panicked. He didn't know what to do. And then uh, Brahma found an elephant, cut his head and put it on. So, that's why he has a head with a trunk. Okay. <laughs> we need to know all of this, why they are worshipped. And so, it is even celebrated in England. Look at the next picture, the mayor. The mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, places a garland on a statue of the Hindu god Ganesh during the Diwali on the square celebration in Traquair, uh, uh, London. People are celebrating all of these. Many of them may not know why they are doing it. So we need to decide, is it right? Is it right for us to celebrate? That is your decision. I am not going to tell you what to do, but I want you to know this. There are dangers associated with participating in occult practices and, and demonic festivities. There are consequences. 
Let me read something that I read uh, in the Three Heavens written by Dr. John Hagee. I'm going to read this. One day John Hagee was called and um, telephoned uh, and asked to pray for a lady. It's a wealthy lady. And uh, Pastor Hagee, could you come pray for me? I think I have a demon. This is what she said. I'm going to read this from his book. Page 109, Three Heavens. Why did you call me, I asked, looking for an out. She responded, I drove past your church and remembered that a friend told me you are a sound Bible teacher. That's why we need sound biblical teaching in churches. It is important. Teaching is important. You need to teach the word of God to your congregation. Otherwise they'll be in darkness. And I was hoping you could help me. So he went over there. He lives in a mansion. And he was invited in. To make the story short. I learned that my hostess was college educated. And her husband was very successful executive who worked for a national firm on the East Coast. Monday through Friday, she was a stay-at-home mom. And from all appearance, they were a model, upper-class American family. Eventually, Mrs. Smith admitted to playing with Ouija board and tarot cards while her husband was out of town to combat boredom. And so she was demon possessed. When you participate in occult practices, you open a door for the devil. That's what happened to her. She had all the money. She lived in a mansion. She did not lack anything. But she, you know, played with this Ouija board, which is a... Um, which is, uh, demonic uh, article it would communicate with you and tell you of the future and so on and so forth innocently played with this she was demon possessed and it took a man of God spending many hours to cast that demon out you know how many Books are out, Harry Potter books are out today. 500 million Harry Potter books are out there today. And several of our children may have one of those books in their hands. Dealing with the occult practices. And um, so that's why we need to be careful. I know of people who have been involved in all of this and then possessed with the demons and under the attack of the demons where they cannot sleep at night. They yell and scream and because a demon has entered their life. If they stay there, they invite many more. Then the life becomes hopeless. You have the freedom to do whatever you want to do. There are many opportunities in this country. And there are so many games. I don't have the time to go into all of those. That our children play. That's why we need to be careful. The demons can come into their lives because they open a door for them. I was so sad to hear that a Catholic church in Goa, that is in India, has 
allowed Ganesh to uh, to sit in their um, church. And let me read that. A Hindu procession venerating the Hindu god Ganesh entered a Catholic church in Spain's Shuta and Manila where they were welcomed by the Vigod General. Afterwards, the diocese issued a statement of apology saying that it was a mistake that should not have happened. Instead, the Archdiocese of Goa, a former Portuguese enclave in India, evangelized by the Jesuit missionary Saint Francis Xavier, is encouraging the faithful to visit Hindu shrines and homes during the 10-day festival of Ganesh. The world religion is being set up right now. A religion where God's name is not honored. It is an amalgamation of all kinds of faith or all kinds of philosophy. Watch out. We are immune to this and we are not, if we are not careful. For instance, there is, a, 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 I believe, a, a church in, a, is built in Abu Dhabi that will accommodate Christians among the Muslims. But the only problem is that Christians cannot convert them. If you do, you will be executed. So this ideology of Islam and other stuff is going on in this world. How much we know that it is the wrong thing. The stage is being set for the coming of the one world religion. That's why I was, uh, you know, wanted to teach this. We need to know. We need to know what is right and what is wrong. If we don't follow the word of God, there is consequence. And the consequence is going to be dangerous. It is not easy to cast out a demon unless a man is gifted and has the anointing to do that. And the price that he pays for that cannot be calculated. Therefore, church, be careful these days. We are living in the end time. The time of the Antichrist is at hand. There is a lot of watered down teachings in the churches. We need to know the truth. And the truth will set us free. Not only that we need to know it, we need to adhere it. We need to obey the word of God. Because the churches are being watered down all over the place. There is no place for doctrines. The cardinal teaching of the word of God. Therefore, be aware in these last days. Let not Satan deceive us. Even the very saints, he said, will be deceived. Therefore, be on God. Teach our children. Save our family. Shall we rise, please?